So guys, boom, you watching this video. I'm sure you already know this by now, but if you don't, Amani Bates is officially transferring to Eastern Michigan University. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not. I feel like I'm not the only person who, who thought he was gonna go somewhere else. A lot of people has been saying this about his decision. Some people has been hating on him. Some people say he was. He should have went to a mid major. He should have went to Louisville. This, this, and that. Like I said, I thought he was gonna go to a bigger time program like a Louisville, or Michigan, or just really any of the other programs that was on his top six. I know a lot of people. I've actually been hearing that the list was essentially kind of fake, and he was really just putting up these types of schools to make it seem like he was going there when in reality he knew all along that he was going to eastern michigan now, like i said it was honestly a surprise to me that he did decide to go to eastern michigan solely on the fact that just the type of year that he had at memphis the year it really just did not go as planned and i know a lot of people had a lot of expectations for Armani Bates heading into that season last year, a lot of people were saying he's the next Kevin Durant, the next LeBron. You guys know the whole spiel, but he only averaged around 10 points a game last year, and it just did not go as planned like how a lot of people had thought. And then he ended up leaving the team, and there was reports that the only reason why he left was because he was done with Memphis and he was going to transfer. And there was also reports that he had a back injury, so he decided to leave. I mean, like I said, this whole Monty Bates situation is honestly just very intriguing. But like I said, present day, he is currently headed to Eastern Michigan next season. And he's going to be teaming up with Noah Farrakhan. Now, my personal opinion, this year, this next season for Monty Bates is going to be the biggest year in his entire life. Now, as you guys can see from the title of this video, I was actually doing some research because you guys know Monty Bates is definitely one of the star set of players heading into the season. He's a player that everybody's going to be watching. And I wanted to see what are his draft projections in the next year's 2023 NBA draft. And according to NBA draftroom.com, you can clearly see that he is projected to go second round second round to the los angeles lakers i know this is not official but right now he's projected to go number 44 to the los angeles lakers <laughs> i'm not gonna lie when i first saw this i was honestly kind of scratching my head because how in the wow is amani bates a second round talent is it just me or what what do you guys think you watching this video i want to know your personal opinions do you think amani bates is a lottery type talent do you think he's a first round type talent or shoot do you think he should go second round in the next year's draft i mean like i said i think he's definitely at least a first round pick i mean his play style his ability to score the ball and just his overall type of game he has so much potential to be a great player but even then if he does go second round he could potentially be possibly the steal of the draft but this honestly just kind of begged the question to me just how good is amani base really because like i said there's no way that there's this many people that's actually better than him. Just looking at the people that they actually have above him. They have guys like Jaden Bradley, who's a phenomenal talent. Mark Mitchell from Duke. Caleb Love from UNC. Kyle Filabowski. Chris Livingston, Amari Bailey, Keontae George, Derek Lively. All these guys is crazy because all these guys, Amani Bates was ranked ahead throughout his entire high school years. And now these guys are projected to go even before Amani Bates. So I'm telling you guys, Amani Bates, he has a lot to prove in this next coming year. And the fact that he's going to a school like Eastern Michigan, he absolutely has no choice but to really hoop. He has no choice but to, he can't drop five points. He can't average eight points, nine points, 10. The fact that he decided to go to a mid-major program, I think he has to at least, you guys may think I'm tripping, he has to at least average 20 points a game. I know it's different in college, but he has to at least average 20 points if he, if, if he wants to be considered a serious top pick in the next year's draft, because just like I said, considering who he is, the hype that he has surrounding his name, he can't average 10 points considering the player that he is in a mid-major type of level. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. I think he definitely should definitely take this entire situation as a learning curve, but I think Amani Bass is definitely going to be fine. I definitely feel like this entire situation kind of changes Amani Bates's outlook I mean if he is projected to go second round if he is a second round type of talent we have to really pump the brakes on the hype you know surrounding his name let's stop the hype that he's this projected player to be a uh, Kevin Durant or LeBron James or Andrew Wiggins we have to stop that type of analogy solely on the fact that he's a second round player so we have to accept the type of player that he is projected to be so you, I'm just saying people just cannot call Amani Bates a bust 
if he does enter the league coming in as a second round pick that's just not that's just my personal opinion i know that may sound a little bit confusing but I'm sure you guys understand, but all in all, guys, this season, I'm definitely super excited to watch Amani Bates play. I know he got a lot of flack. I know he got a lot of hate for his decision to go to a mid-major program and go to an Eastern Michigan type of program because selling the fact that they went 10 and 21 last season. They're not known to be a winning program. They're not known to go to the NCAA tournament. They're not known to be a program that's winning a lot of games and developing NBA talents. They're not known to be that type of team. So... Amani Bates is definitely going to have to put that team on his back. I know they have other notable players like Noah Farrakhan. That duo is going to be very, very interesting. I said it in my last video. It's definitely going to be interesting, solely than the fact that Noah is a guy that excels, in my personal opinion, with the ball in his hands. Same thing with Amani Bates. He's a guy that really can showcase his skill when he does have the ball in his hand. I don't view Amani Bates as a guy to come off screens and do this and be a role player. Amani Bates excels when he has the ball in his hand, so... It's going to be very interesting because I know Noah Farrakhan is definitely trying to make it into the NBA. So, guys, what do you guys think about this entire Money Bates situation? How do you think his next year is going to go? Do you think he should be a top pick in the next year's draft? Do you think he's better than a lot of these guys ahead of him? What are your overall opinions on Imani Bates? Guys, just comment down below and let's get a great basketball conversation started, guys. If you made it to the end, please make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at JuiceMayHoops with the extra S at the end. Don't forget to comment below your opinions. And with all that being said, guys, thank you for watching. It's been another episode of Juice May TV. Peace.